no glory, just the foundation. And God wants you to get beyond that. You see, in life when we detect sins and secrets and deception in our home, the first thing you got to do is address it. And you address it by committing to yourself and your family. We are about to shut this down. It starts in your own mind by shutting your own mind down, renewing your mind, transforming your mind. Amen? You got to shut down these thoughts in your mind. You will not let these thoughts take you captive. You will take them captive and shut them down. Everybody say shut it down. So you need to sit down somewhere and look at your life. Look at your legacy. Look at your family. Step back and look at what you've built. Take a mirror and look at yourself in the mirror and say, this is what I've built. See, I don't know what's in your mirror, but you do. When you look in the mirror, you can't fool yourself. You know what's in that mirror. You know what you've done. You know what you haven't done. You know what God called you to be, and you know what you're not doing. So look at your reputation. What kind of reputation are you building? How many of you know we got to leave this place one day? They got to stand up and say something about you. What will they say? So I tell you today, stop working so much. Stop playing golf and all the other little fun things and toys you play with so much. You can play, but just don't play them so much that you forget about the Lord and his business. Turn off that phone sometime. Turn off the TV. Turn off the radio and just shut it down and sit down somewhere. Sit at his feet and listen. Get close to him so you can hear what it is he's saying about you. That's the man you need to listen to. You need to tell that man that's calling you, I'm about to shut you down. Because I'm listening to the man who can tell me all and who can change all. And who I met this weekend at a women's conference. And no more will you come by and have your way with me. No more will I go that way. I'm shutting it down. You see, you're losing your life. <laughs> you're losing your self-respect. You're losing your family, your focus your dreams, your relationship with the Lord, you're losing all of the dreams and the destiny that God has for you. You'll never be able to get them because you're not shutting some things down. You're losing your children. Somebody needs to call that meeting today. As soon as I get home, I will call them and say, hey, come on, now, today. No, we can't wait till tomorrow. Uh-uh, no, 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 that can wait. Shut that down. Shut that computer down. Shut that loud music down. Come on in here. We fist to have a meeting, amen? You see, when this woman met Jesus, she shut it down. No more water pot. She dropped that stuff. She said, you know, I know I got to get his bath water fixed. He wants his food cooked, but not today. Shut that down. No more chores, no cooking, no children, no gossiping on the phone, no other men. I'm just going to shut it down. I need to meet with Jesus. So she shut down her old ways, her old thinking, her old secrets, her old habits and hang up. All of her sins, she shut it down. See, she shut it all down, and then she started drinking from the living fountain. She allowed Jesus to make her over because she needed an extreme makeover. Once you shut down your old ways, then you'll be able to go back to the city as a new woman. Then you'll be able to go back to your home as a new mother, a new wife, a new husband. On your job, people will know that you have been with a man, but it will be Jesus. They will say, you know what? She came back to work this week. I know she's been with somebody. Because she acts indifferent. You know how you be when you be with that man. You come back acting all crazy. Act crazy for Jesus tomorrow. Go back in there and let them say, you know, she been with somebody this weekend. I don't know who it is. Go ask her. Go ask her. Girl, who you been with this weekend? I've been with Jesus. I thought you were dating so-and-so's husband. Now nah, I shut him down. No more. I shut that down. I got a new man in my life. You so see the reason why a lot of you cannot witness, you cannot win your home because you haven't shut some stuff down yourself. Your children don't want to listen to you because they know you ain't right. You're not putting the Lord first, so how are you gonna tell them to put the Lord first? You live in any kind of way, how you expect them to live a special way? We've got these young girls here, we're supposed to be an example for, and we trying to wear our skirts higher than theirs and a tight spandex and the down low and everything else. We've got to be an example. Men, we need we need you to be an example for our men. We need to not, you know, be looking for you. We need to be able to find you. Working, leading, guiding, supporting, taking the initiative, being the first. We need to find you there, men. Our men, are, our young men are watching. That's why they're sagging and dragging. They don't have no example. Would you shut it down on the job a little bit and come be an example?
Could you shut down the golf game or the whatever you're doing? Could you get off the couch and come on up here and be a witness and show the men how to do things? Shut it down. See, this entire conference has been about harvest. When you look at this scripture, all Jesus was doing, he was going through Samaria to get the harvest. The harvest was in there, right? The harvest was plentiful, but the laborers were few. So Jesus said, I'll be the example. Let me go through. I must need go through Samaria. There's a woman there that needs to shut it down. And she's a part of my harvest that I, you know, I've got to go by and see her. So, uh, but, I, but the thing that I want you to re realize first, Matt, is that there are so many things we have to shut down. God wants to bless us with so many other things that we have not room to receive it. Even our own church, in our churches, we need to shut some things down. We need to shut some things down that are going on that we are allowing because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. How many of you know that if you, you know, that commercial talks about friends don't let friends drive drunk? Because they kill them crazy cells? Well, why are you letting your friend live any kind of way? She going to kill herself. Why are you letting your buddy live that kind of way? Why are you letting him beat up on his wife and you don't say anything? You know he's not supposed to put his hand on that woman. You know better and you act like, well, that's his business. He run his house. No. You're supposed to help him shut it down. If you're a friend, if you really love him and you care about his life, don't let him go that way. Because he is a part of your harvest, or she is a part of your harvest, and you have come to do the business of the Lord. Amen? So we do what Jesus did. So we look at this woman of the well, and we thank her for her life, because her life is an example that's an open book. Many of you won't open up your lives, but we learn from this woman. So now that we know better, we can do better. Amen? See, Jesus has been waiting to get it right for you. He's asking you, how long do you expect me to wait? How long do you expect me to turn my head? How long for you, do you expect me to just keep forgiving you and, and looking over your faults? And how long do you expect for me to act like I don't, I'm, I'm dumb? I think a lot of y'all think we think Jesus is dumb. He's blind. He don't really see stuff. You know what I mean, really? Have you ever seen a kid, you know, uh, kick another child or do something, act like you don't see that child? I didn't do nothing. He sees all and knows all. Quit thinking you're trying to fool somebody. He goes home with you even when you don't want him to. So I want you to know today that you've got to shut down that old life because Jesus is going to shut it down for you if you don't. The old way of life has been condemned and it must be demolished today. Have you ever seen a condemned building? It's raggedy, isn't it? Tell your neighbor that your stuff is raggedy. And Jesus came to condemn that thing. You need to just go ahead and tear it down for it fall over on you and kill you with your crazy self. Demolish it today. Tear it down. We used to sing a song, Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. Well, today we need to tear you down. You need to tear yourself down. Because the place that you're living in has been condemned. It's not safe for your family. It's not safe for your children. It's not even safe for you. And if you stay in there, you're going to lose all that you have. So one of the reasons why you, you need to do this is because when you live your life, when you're making your, your, um, your legacy, you understand that people are coming behind you and they're watching your walk. Your walk is your life. It is a legacy. And so when you are saved, then you start walking differently. See, many of us are living a raggedy life because we're walking like we have no place to go. We're walking like we have no purpose. God has no plan for us, that he hasn't saved us and set us apart. We're walking like we're not favored. Well, I came today to tell you, you need to walk like you've got somewhere to go. Walk like you belong to the Lord. Walk like you are blessed and highly favored. Walk like you know better. Walk like you've shut some stuff down in your life. Amen? So if you've got that new way of walking, you need to show it and act like it. Walk with your purpose. Walk in your divine destination. Get your swagger back. Put a pep in your step and get in a hurry about it. You know, the harvest is waiting. Your home is waiting. Your 